And then the idea of after resistless, sleepless, calm, holding humanity as in thy open hand. So we're back to, again, this grasping imagery that we've seen, the holding, grasping imagery that we've seen so regularly in Leaves of Grass, as some ephemeral toy. And this will take us back to, to many, many references. I think Whitman's readers would have immediately gone to Shakespeare's King Lear and Gloucester talking about what the gods see humans as, playthings, toys, flies to be uh, messed with. Those ephemeral toy, how ill to ever forget thee. So, I mean, here we are with Whitman talking now about the importance of remembering what actually matters. As we have said before, Whitman's view, it seems, is that the only sin is to forget. And here it's, I think it's possible we may have forgotten something. We built this amazing technological dam, but we forgot that with a little bit of rain from nature, all kinds of terrible things can happen. And then he'll say it, for I, too, have forgotten. Now, we're familiar with this I, too, construction, of course, very often in Leaves of Grass, we've seen this. Of course, the great Langston Hughes used this as one of his greatest poems, this construction of I, too. Here, notice, I, too, have forgotten. In other words, what is Whitman saying? Well, even himself, he says, even me, this poet of the people, this one who is so close to nature, even I, too, have forgotten. And then notice in parenthetics, wrapped, back to, back to holding now, wrapped in these little potencies of, notice the six, progress, politics, culture, wealth, inventions, civilization, in a line, technology, right? Have lost, he says, I too have forgotten, have lost my recognition of your silent, ever swaying power, ye mighty elemental throes, in which and upon which we float, and every one of us is buoyed. Now this idea of floating obviously takes us back to our study of uh, Passage to India and others, you know, where we got this uh, this sailing motif happening. Bowie, you'll remember from Song of Myself 40, um, as that word gets played with as well. Well, what exactly is it that Whitman is doing in this set of lines, uh, a voice from death? I think, I think the argument that he's making is that we have to remember the power of nature, and we have to keep ourselves in some kind of humble check, some kind of humble relationship to nature. We mustn't think too highly of ourselves, I think is the argument that Whitman is making, because nature can prove to us time and time again, as has often been the case. I mean, think about the exemplar of Titanic. Obviously, there's so many examples of this, right? And to be, uh, all the biblical illusions, I think, are, are going to be powerful. Whitman himself, taking on that priestly role, is, is going to play with some of those illusions, no question. Uh, and at 3A, obviously, Emerson's nature comes to mind here, the 1836 offering. I think that was sitting in the back of uh, Whitman's mind as he was playing this game. And then finally at 3B, what was a time in your life that nature humbled you and our nation uh, humbled us? And um, did, did, do you think that uh, you learned the lesson in his reading, uh, Leaves of Grass, helping us to remember and learn that lesson? Thank you.